Praise the Lord. Good morning and welcome to the Sunrise with Jesus. Friends, scripture speaks of an ultimate privilege that has been given to every one of us for certain phases in our life and maybe for certain others for more than certain phases in our life. And you read of this privilege in the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians chapter 1 verse 29 where the word of God says, For to you it has been granted for the sake of Christ not only to believe in him but to suffer for him. It's amazing friends. Scripture actually talks about suffering as the higher privilege. Now, when we look at life, we realize that we have just one life and that one life is successful on the basis of whether from this life we manage to graduate to heaven. Of course, there are very many other scales that we have used to gauge the success of life. Maybe some of us would think, oh, we have lived well if so many people would remember us for generation after generation. If somehow we get our name on the history text, maybe some of us would think our lives are a success if our names are immortalized by maybe having some roads or some stars or some satellites that are named after us. But in fact, you and I know the truth that our lives are the success if through this lifetime we manage to ensure that we don't lose our soul but manage to get ourselves across to heaven. And scripture also specifically tells us the only way that you and I can get to heaven is by being united with Christ. And it doesn't stop there. But it says you and I need to be united with Christ in suffering. We read this in the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy chapter 2 verse 11 where the word of God says, If we have died with him, we shall rise with him. If we endure with him, then we shall reign with him. So scripture clearly tells us the success of life, our immortal heritage, our prize of heaven is given to us only if we have suffered with Christ. Now friends, let us not romanticize suffering. There is a truth about suffering that suffering is indispensable and suffering is what gets us to the glory of heaven. But we could also try to romanticize suffering saying that, well, if you're a saint, it's going to be a cakewalk for you. You're going to be singing as you enter the arena of the lions and you know that for the sake of faith, you've given up your life. Well, friends, the truth is this, before the saints could raise themselves up even in the hour of their deepest sufferings to praise God and to proclaim their faith in the amazing, eternal and glorious reward of heaven, they did go through dark nights of the soul, dark nights of despair. But what was so precious was while they endured every struggle that you and I dread, the struggle of the dark night, they would, through those nights, keep turning to God, keep pleading with God, keep holding on to God, till He leads them by His overabundant grace from that dark night to a morning of grace. Friends, it is so beautiful when we open the Gospels to see that the Bible does not cut out the dark night that Jesus went through at Gethsemane. It does not present Jesus as some kind of anesthetized hero who did not feel the pain crushing his body, his mind and his soul. We see how Jesus 
comes to the gathering of his chosen friends and would speak about how his soul was sorrowful unto death. He would say that while he was surrounded by his companions, yes, sometimes when we go through suffering, we realize that no other human can share our pain. And maybe that alienation, that loneliness increases the burden that this suffering has brought upon us. We continue to see how Jesus at Gethsemane would struggle when he had to face the full weight of the sufferings to come. We see how he's bowed down and sweat drops, what scripture says, like blood. We hear him telling the father repeatedly, let this chalice pass from me. And friends, at Gethsemane, what we see is the key to power and glory, where Jesus, through that suffering, turns to the father and waits until the angels minister to him. He waits until he is empowered. And from there, right up to Calvary, he can feel the pain. He can feel the abandonment of the soul. He can feel his wounds burning. And yet he has an extraordinary inner strength which is extraordinary because it is from heaven. And because of that strength, we see that he accomplishes the mission of salvation. Friends, today, you and I, we could recognize that in our lives, there are sufferings. And the first thing that scripture calls us to understand is that this is a privilege, a privilege that gains us an access to be intimate with God. Because in our sufferings, God invites us to those most personal moments of his own passion. In our sufferings, we need to know that feeling pain, feeling anxiety, feeling the struggle of the soul is nothing that is to be despised. It is part of the journey but we also have a most precious reminder from scripture that even in your darkest, darkest hour, just turn back to God. Even if you have a hundred questions in your mind, a hundred wounds that cause you such excruciating agony, even if you are stunned and stumped by the failures and the tragedies that life sometimes deals to us, even in that darkest hour, turn to the Lord. Every night when you go to sleep, remember to tell Jesus, Jesus, I do not know anything of what's happening to me, but I know by faith that you have to lead me out of where I am because I want to be where you are. And friends, this is the grand assurance to every one of us who are privileged to suffer. Firstly, that when we turn to God in prayer, especially when that prayer arises from the size of a suffering soul, we will be given the glory of Christ. If we have died with him, we shall rise with him. Secondly, when we offer our sufferings, to be united, to be added, to be contributed to the sufferings, the passion and the death of Jesus, we are granted a glorious participation in the mission of Jesus, which is the salvation of our souls. And that means if today I have a headache, I tell the Lord, Lord, this headache is agonizing, but I offer it with that agony that you went through when a crown of thorns was pushed down your head. And when you offer your headache, your suffering, whatever it may be, you will be a channel of salvation to the people God has given you and maybe to a million other souls. Friends, our suffering is our call, our mission, our treasure, our suffering is that value that we have to make this world a blessed place.
to lead generations to Christ. And most beautifully, our sufferings is the promise that yes, one day we will be glorified with Jesus. Precious Lord, you are come to us in the form of bread. We raise our hands up to you. We open our hearts to you to worship you. We want to come to you, O oh God, worshiping and adoring in the beginning of this day. We want to begin our day in worship, in thanksgiving, looking at your face. Come and worship. sanctified us and made us a holy nation. You turned us to a royal priesthood. Royal priesthood always worthy to come into your presence to worship you, to sacrifice our life to you. This morning we come to you worshipping and adoring. Worship the Lord. Sing His praises, God's own people, for He called you out of darkness. Worship Jesus, our Redeemer, He is risen. King of glory, our Redeemer, our precious Lord, you are present in the Holy Eucharist, assuring to us that you will be present at every moment of this day. And we worship you, we thank you, we adore you, O God. You have given us the grace and the privilege to begin the day in your presence. Looking at your face, we worship you, O oh God. Come to Jesus, taste his kindness in the Spirit. Bless the Father, worship Jesus. worship you, O oh God, we adore you. Looking at your face, O oh God, we surrender the whole day in your hands that we may be able to see your face always. Hear your word at every moment. 
that we may live out our day in your presence hallelujah hallelujah praise you jesus thank you lord my dear sisters and brothers let us begin our day claiming a promise every day the lord has a promise to give us a promise the lord said he would always keep because the name of the lord is faithfulness to promises this morning we want to claim the promise from isaiah chapter 30 verses 20 and 21 and the promise goes like this though the lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction yet he will not hide his face anymore but you will your eyes will see him and your ears will hear a word behind you saying this is the way walk in it when you turn to the right or to the left you will hear a word behind you saying this is the way walk in it lord we thank you for this promise your face will not remain hidden from our hearts and the promise continues your ears will hear a word lord we want to hear a word from you whenever we make our decision whenever we meet someone and we have to say a word whenever someone hurts us and we get afflicted we want to hear your word and you promises your ears will hear a word behind you saying this is the way walk in it when you turn to the right or to the left lord when we travel in a car there are instruments modern equipments to tell us where to turn which way to go because we know clearly the destination but there are no equipments speaking to us from outside of us but your love is there dwelling in our hearts whispering to our hearts turn this way turn that way every step lord we take shall be in the light of your word in the power of your spirit we claim this promise for us this day we will not spend by ourselves because you promises you will never leave us alone there could be problems we may have to face there could be things that that would hurt us and yet even if we have to eat the bread of adversity and drink the water of affliction your face will always be there before us and we will look at your face oh god and we will take delight in your love and we will follow your word lord show us your face do not hide your face from us today oh god let your word your word you have to give us let your word be whispered into our hearts let us never be left in the darkness of adversity in the darkness of uncertainty lord let's have our prayer this morning that we will want to see your face hear your word at every moment open the eyes of my heart lord open the eyes of my heart i want to see you. i want to see you lord i want to see Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of 
my heart I want to see you I want to see you to see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 lord lord there will be there will be fascinating flashes of light around us there will be things drawing our eyes to them and yet to god the one face we want to see is your face the one voice we want to hear is your voice there are moments we will be drawn to the sweet voices of people to the distracting voices of people i don't want to be led astray in the wrong ways lord let your voice be heard let be your voice be heard as a whisper in my heart i will be attentive to that whisper of your word and i want i want always to cry out holy 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 looking at your face waiting to sanctify my day lord open my eyes open the ears of my heart lord open the ears of my heart i want to hear you i want to hear you open the ears of my heart lord open the ears of my heart i want to hear you i want to hear you to hear your praises lifted high shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 to hear your praise is lifted high shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 lord i want to hear your voice let not the voices of fear and anxiety from my heart disturb me your voice your voice that gentle voice that elijah heard in the cave When Elijah heard that voice your voice in the cave at that moment of loneliness and distress Elijah was refreshed was strengthened Elijah could continue his walk for the Lord the journey to fulfill his mission Lord we want to hear your voice today we want to see your face today we want to live in your presence today holy spirit open my heart Holy Spirit pour out pour out your love into my heart that I may I may not crave for wrong ways of love pour out your peace into my heart that I may not long for the distractions of evil pleasures Lord Holy Spirit pour out pour out your love pour out your peace pour out your joy into my heart for today that I may always be open to your love and peace and joy flowing into my heart pour out your spirit pour out your 
moment of grace this moment of this experience of your presence this great feeling that you are there for us let that strengthening feeling remain with us the whole day give us your blessing oh lord your blessing your blessing that will be there with us all through this day your blessing oh god as you blessed the children who came to you The children come to me you said and you took them up in your hands and you blessed them let your blessing fill our hearts with your presence and your joy bless us oh god bless the lord oh my soul oh my soul and worship his holy like never before oh my soul and worship your holy name so sacrament most holy oh sacrament We have a mission. We will be in fire to go out and heal everyone. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. God is the source of all life. The Ministry of the Divine Retreat Center needs your support as they continue in their commitment to preach the good news of Jesus through the weekly retreats, the daily online and television ministry, through the service of 3000 disadvantaged persons, the mentally challenged, the aged, the destitute women the sick and abandoned 
and economically disadvantaged families. If you are inspired to share in this ministry through the sacred service of almsgiving, we invite you to send your love offering to Divine Charitable Trust, CD account number 04022310000014, HDFC Bank, Chalakudi Branch, IFSC Code, HDFC 0000402 and email the details to divineretreatcenter at gmail.com.